or take that over in. I'd like to bring the uh, Police Merit Commission to order on this, the 23rd of October, 2017. Uh, if we could please stand. The Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call to order, Pledge of Allegiance. Now the determination of a quorum, and yep, we got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, need approval of the minutes of the meeting we of September 11th. You need the comments of the commission. Sorry? Comments of the commission. I missed one. Oh, comments of the commission members. No, sir. None. Nope. I figured you'd probably yell at me if I had not. <laughs> okay. How about the uh, minutes? Everybody have a copy of them? Yes, I motion to approve them. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. In favor? You mean the unanimous. We do not have any unfinished business according to the, the agenda. New business. Yeah, that's that's you, Chief. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure how to phrase it, but I'm requesting the certification of the promotional list. Um, in such a way that will allow me, I, I, I'm requesting your authorization to make two promotions um, from the rank of patrol officer to that of sergeant. Um, I've uh, looked at this uh, from a manpower and staffing uh, situation and I have slots available, I have positions available, uh, I have a need, um, and I was... Uh, Budget for it. I was in conversations with the city controller who has financially authorized this and says we're in good shape there. So legally what I need from you is the permission to make those promotions. Now the actual promotion ceremonies will not occur tonight. Sure. They'll occur at a later time. But uh, um, I stand before you this evening uh, seeking uh, and requesting that authorization. Uh, Mr. President, I suggest we take that in two sections, Section A and Section B, so we can keep that. So I'd make a motion on Section A under new business to certify the sergeant's list of uh, applicants 6687, 7571, and 8845 for promotion to sergeant under that list. The motion has been made. Has it been seconded? I'll second it. Okay, Gail seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Unanimous. Is there a second section that? Yes, sir, Mr. President. I motion that we uh, recommend to the chief to approve uh, at his discretion the two applicants he chose off of that list we just approved to the uh, rank of sergeant at his discretion and time. Are you going to go with the top yeah. two? Or? Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. I, I, my philosophy is that the rank that they finished in the selection process is the rank that they will be offered promotion. Is that as it's showing on our form, sir? Yes. Okay, then I'll amend that to uh, make a motion to approve the chief to submit for promotion to the rank of sergeant applicant 6687 and 7571. Okay, motion been made, been second. Uh, may I ask a question? Yes. If, if we just approve those two as the certified names, if for one reason or another, one of the applicants says, can't do this right now, then do we have to come back to this board to approve that third person? If I, if I could, Mark Osborne with uh, investigations, I help with the merit system, we started it. Um, in essence, what the state statute allows is the chief, the flexibility of anybody from the top three. So okay. I think what he's asking for you guys to certify the top three, and then that gives him the flexibility. I think in this particular situation, he's going with one and two. But if one or two declines, that he would have the ability to go to three. And that's, that's what right. we did under Section A. We've already done that. Yeah. Okay. okay. We've done it before. Yeah, so it would be more flexible to do the top three, although his intent is just one and two. But it, it keeps him from having to come back to you if one or two says no, then have to get recertified for number three to get approved to do that. So do we need that second motion, I guess? 
No, it's a clarification of the, the, the motions on the floor. It's just uh, not. It, the motion on the floor is to okay. accept the. Mr. President, I, re I retract my motion due uh, to the explanation given and just make a motion to approve the chief to uh, promote to sergeant uh, next available applicants on the certified list, which we're already done under, C under uh, A. I'll second that. Second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Karen. I did. Karen did. You have something else for me? I believe next on the agenda will be officer recognition. Performance recognition. Performance recognition. Yes, yes. sir. Um, as you know, I tend to like to stick to a script on these so I don't go off on a tangent and keep you here all night. So uh, with that in mind, I will uh, uh, continue that tradition. Uh, first of all, let me uh, start off by saying thank you to the members of our Police Merit Commission for granting me the opportunity to conduct these officer recognitions during commission meetings. We collectively share the belief that you, as members of the Merit Commission, members of the public either attending here or viewing at home, uh, and our officers certainly deserve to hear about some of the many good deeds being performed by the officers here at Lawrence Police Department on a daily basis. These opportunities are just a few examples worthy of public recognition uh, this evening. Uh, our officers are out working hard in our community around the clock every day. Many are undoubtedly doing things that uh, go overlooked, that are in need of, or deserving of recognition. So these are just a few examples of the great work performed by our officers. And uh, uh, the hard part was to stop at just three that you're going to hear about tonight. I could, as I mentioned earlier, I could easily keep you here all night, which I don't want to do. Um, so I now asked to be joined at the podium by the members of our day shift who are here this evening. I understand we only have one this evening. The others uh, had uh, conflicts. Uh, they were here last week but couldn't be here this week, which is sometimes how it goes. So um, if I could have Brian Sharp join me at the podium. So the story here is on October 1st, so just this month, Officer Brian Sharp was on routine patrol when he noticed a 2010 Ford Mustang at Pendleton Pike and Shadeland Avenues with a paper plate that was registered to a 1989 Chevrolet. Based on this observation, proactive uh, self-starter Officer Sharp stopped the vehicle to investigate the uh, alleged uh, violation. Through further investigation, Officer Sharp learned that three of the occupants of the vehicle each of those people had an outstanding warrant for their arrest, uh, which means not outstanding as in good, but outstanding as in active warrant for, for his arrest issued by a judge. This almost never happens that all occupants of a vehicle are wanted. Um, but in this case, uh, that, was, that was the situation. During the investigation, Officer Sharp located drug paraphernalia, some marijuana. All three, all three individuals were arrested. Uh, and when one of the persons arrested arrived at the jail to be processed, it was discovered the individual had concealed eight grams of crystal meth amphetamine concealed within his body, resulting in another charge for that individual. Further during the investigation, Officer Sharp discovered information that led him to believe there may be another individual with this group staying at a local motel. This person also having multiple warrants for her arrest, and she um, may have been using several false uh, identities in order to avoid arrest. Acting on this information, Officer Sharp, assisted by Lieutenant Evans, went to the motel and located the individual wanted on, the fel on multiple felony warrants uh, from a variety of Indiana counties. As many of us know, um, Lieutenant Evans in particular has an uncanny ability to get people to tell the truth. He learned this wanted individual had been avoiding being arrested for nearly two years. That is until she encountered the Lawrence Police Department. Uh, also discovered inside the motel room were three bundles of methamphetamine, um, totaling approximately 85 grams, other drug paraphernalia, a dozen cell phones, and about $2,300 in cash. Officer McKenna uh, assisted Officer Sharp with processing the evidence and the numerous pieces of property. As you can imagine, this, all of this is very time consuming and it all has to be documented and very well detailed about how everything happened. Um, so 
Uh, this is for a street level drug investigation, very complex case that was handled, in my opinion, perfectly. And I'll tell you on a side note too, getting off my script, I was working that day and I was in the squad, I happened to be in the squad room talking to some officers and I saw all of the stuff that they received from the motel and the arrests that they made and the officers were just so so casual about it, as in, no big deal, this is just what we do. And it wasn't until later that I really learned, when I saw the report, how complex the case was, and they weren't even, they weren't even bragging about it to me. So uh, it gives you an idea, um, kind of the, the humbleness and confidence of these officers and, and what I consider just great uh, police work. Um, so I want to uh, encourage and commend these officers for doing what we say, going beyond the traffic stop, looking beyond that license plate that didn't match the car, uh, exhibiting determination and desire to follow through with the investigation to its conclusion. Officer Sharp, Lieutenant Evans, and Officer McKenna are to be commended for diligently pursuing the suspects in this case and taking all the action where action should have been taken. Uh, these folks have been avoiding arrest and incarceration for way too long uh, until they encountered these officers of the Lawrence Police Department. So thank you. Um, Officer Sharp and your colleagues um, for um, bringing these suspects to justice, and not just on these days, uh, but on every day that you work. Uh, in this specific incident, you went from noticing a false paper plate to making multiple felony arrests on those who were already being sought on open warrants and seizing dangerous drugs, paraphernalia, and likely the proceeds of drug sales, which was uh, the $2,300. So. Thank you very much and great job. And Thank I just you. want to bring this to you. Congratulations. Woo. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay, um, next uh, from the investigations division. Um, on my script, it, uh, I call for Jeremy Kurth to come up and join me at the uh, podium. He was here last Monday, but this Monday he's in Mexico. So. Um, I will just uh, read this to you in his absence uh, and hope that, um, that he's able to view it on YouTube or in some other fashion, but he knows how I feel about this particular case and his work product in general. Um, Detective Kurth, his name should be somewhat familiar to you because I've had him up here before. He's a valued, experienced veteran member of the investigations division, uh, currently assigned the majority of the violent crimes that happen in, uh, in Lawrence uh, because of his background experience and training. Uh, Detective Kurth is also our liaison to our federal, state, and local law enforcement partners, including IMPD, uh, the uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, as we know, the ATF, and he focuses his efforts and attention on those who would use firearms while committing crimes. As part of his assigned duties, Detective Kurth was asked to investigate an incident occurring on September 21st, uh, just about a month ago, at or at around uh, ele oh, I'm sorry, 1 a.m., where the clerk of the Circle K convenience store at 6308 Oaklandon Road uh, reported he had just been robbed by an individual who entered the store, pointed a hand handgun at the clerk, demanded cash and other items, and then fled on foot. Uh, Detective uh, Kurth obtained fairly good quality images of the suspect from surveillance cameras, which were shared with our uh, fellow law enforcement uh, colleagues and other agencies uh, in an attempt to get this guy located and uh, identified. Um, so he worked very closely with IMPD detectives assigned to the robbery coordination unit, and as, as indicated in the probable cause affidavit, uh, Detective Kurth learned that an individual with the same description as one of the other Circle K robberies in Indianapolis had been stopped and arrested on the northwest side by a proactive IMPD officer. Uh, the officer at that time recognized the person that he had in, in uh, custody, uh, closely resembled the Lawrence Circle K su suspect, and rec re recalled seeing items in the trunk of that person's vehicle that had been taken during the Circle K robbery. Uh, Detective Kurth's close collaboration with IMPD detectives ultimately led him to filing multiple level three felony charges in the Lawrence Circle K robbery incident, as well as the robbery incident earlier in Indianapolis. 
Uh, I would also be remiss if I didn't publicly commend and thank the proactive IMPD officers who stopped and arrested the person uh, who was alleged, who's alleged to have committed the robberies and for sharing information developed uh, with detectives. It's just great, uh, excellent work. Uh, it's a, a classic example of our ongoing interagency collaboration between IMPD uh, and the robbery unit and Lawrence Police Department detectives uh, leading to a suspect being identified in these incidents. Uh, this is uh, in no small part is contributed to Detective Kurth's commitment to his excellent working relationship and collaborations we enjoy with our federal and state partners. Uh, these great relationships result in improved public safety for us all and accountability uh, for this suspect who would venture into Lawrence to commit crimes, especially violent crimes. So uh, please join me in recognizing Detective Jeremy Kurth for his outstanding efforts, keeping our community safe and those who would uh, commit crimes in Lawrence. And finally, and this one's uh, kind of last but not least, um, this is uh, going to be a little surprise for a gentleman here in the room, but if I could have uh, Captain Mark Osborne uh, join me here at the podium. Is he still here? <laughs> Last year, on Christmas Eve, Captain Osborne was the Investigations Division on-call detective. Many on the commission or viewing at home may not realize that there's always a member of our Investigations Division who is on-call and they kind of have to take turns doing it. Well, Captain Osborne, displaying the leader that he is well known for, volunteered to be on call the one night uh, of the year that nobody wants to be on call. He's the boss of the division and he easily could have delegated that, but he took it upon himself to volunteer to be on call on Christmas Eve. Well, as we all know, Murphy's Law works uh, in many weird ways and uh, it was Christmas Eve at about 11.30 p.m. and our second homicide of the year in the city of Lawrence was reported. Now to clarify this statement, the actual incident started in uh, Hamilton County on Christmas Eve and we believe the facts will demonstrate that the suspect who was recently arrested drove the victim back towards Indianapolis and wound up on uh, Carroll Road, which is the county, li which is the county line to the east uh, with our Hancock County neighbors. Uh, and it just happened to turn into, it just happened to kind of land in Lawrence. The facts of the incident do not necessarily indicate that the actual homicide occurred in Lawrence. Uh, however, uh, that the suspect drove the victim into Lawrence where he was located, um, possibly already deceased. Um, but I want to get back to uh, Captain Osborne. He was called away from his family to uh, respond and investigate this murder. Working diligently, Captain Osborne oversaw the crime scene here in Lawrence, conducted interviews, spoke to the victim's family, developed information about where we believe the victim received his fatal injuries prior to passing away. He worked with the Hamilton County authorities to locate and process the evidence at that crime scene. This is all on Christmas Eve. Uh, interviewed additional witnesses, worked with our colleagues at the Marion County Forensic Services Agency, which is also known as the Crime Lab, um, uh, collected, processed, analyzed evidence, acted as the liaison between Marion and Hamilton County Prosecutor's Office to determine the proper venue um, for this matter to be prosecuted, a very important fact. Uh, eventually developing enough evidence to make an arrest of the person alleged to be responsible for the victim's death. Murder charges have now been filed and the case is pending adjudication in Marion County Criminal Court. Homicide investigations can be among the most challenging, delicate um, investigations to conduct. Multiple dynamics exist, even in a simple homicide investigation, as lives are permanently changed with the loss of life to violent crime. Captain Osborne has accrued tremendous experience over the years investigating complex homicide and violent crimes investigations. Uh, what is actually most commendable about this particular investigation is Cap uh, Captain Osborne's exemplary leadership that he displayed that night. First, by taking the on-call for Christmas Eve, responding to the incident, conducting a thorough investigation, which led to the arrest, charges filed, and pending court case. For his fellow detectives 
who have worked alongside Captain Osborne over the years, none of this comes as any surprise. And uh, we felt it was time to publicly recognize and commend Captain Osborne for his leadership, his work ethic, uh, not only just to this specific incident, um, but to all the cases that he works. Uh, he's, a, he's a working supervisor without a doubt. And uh, um, he's bringing resolution and accountability. So on behalf of the citizens of Lawrence, the members of the police department, I think on your behalf, I can say, Thank you, sir, for a job well done. Thank you. Mark, how did you persuade Hamilton County to give up the, cha the uh, charging? I'm sorry. How did you? How did you? How did you persuade Hamilton County? To, <laughs> to, to well, it's funny you say that. Um, actually, there, there was a lot of venue talk because the body laid in Marion County, although we determined the crime scene by blood was in Hamilton County. Their argument was all we could prove was that a fight occurred and that the death, they have no idea where it occurred. So yeah, okay. ultimately Marion County ended up just saying, we'll take it instead of fighting about it. And Good job, bud. So he, he basically presented the case and then the two prosecutors discussed all the legal ramifications of where to file this case and they decided based on their expertise that Marion County was the place to try it, so. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That was cool. I've got a little list here that follows, and it says comments by the chief. Is that it? Yeah, you've heard enough from me. <laughs> okay, any citizens comments? Hearing none, I will accept. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion for adjourn adjournment. Yeah, so moved. And seconded. Seconded. It's done. Thank you.